Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden. Uh, welcome to a summary of what we did in our Friday project. So this is a project we're gonna be working on every Friday. Tune in on Twitch with all these wonderful people uh, if you'd like to, uh, to see us work on it live. But I'm gonna give you a summary of everything that we did today. Also, I'm a little under the weather. You can probably tell by my voice, but we, we got some stuff done. So we're working on an app called Listed TV or Listed Media, and it's going to allow users to create, share, and watch lists of YouTube channels. Eventually, you'll also be able to create, share, and watch lists of Instagram accounts or uh, create a feed of specific Twitter profiles. Uh, right now, we're focusing on YouTube channels, but uh, we're thinking about, in general terms, how we might expand this to other things as well. So today was all about the database. We specifically are using Postgres as our database, and we're using a tool called Prisma to talk to that database. Uh, and so to get set up with our database today, the first thing we needed to do was set up a Docker Compose file. Uh, so on Docker Hub, they have this Postgres image, and that's what we used. So in our code, we have this Docker Compose file that we created. Now, if you don't know what Docker is, you can think of it as basically easily reproducible environments. So uh, this Docker Compose file describes a, a database service that uses the Postgres image. Any other developer can take this file on their computer and spin up a Postgres instance. This is much easier than having to install a Postgres instance on your computer or connect it to a remote instance. Basically, I have Docker installed on my computer, I run this file, and now there's a Postgres instance running that I can connect to in my application code. So uh, we talked through this whole file, we set up the environment variables, we got some volumes going, and then now we have that database uh, running in the background that we can write code against. Now that we had the database, we needed to update our uh, Prisma schema to talk to that database. So if you look at our Prisma schema at the very top here, uh, we have the provider as Postgres and it has the environment as database URL. So we created a .env that has all of our configuration. We've got the database host, user, password, um, name, port, and then we combine all of those things into a Postgres connection string. string. Um, but what's nice is our Prisma code uses this .env, and then also our Docker Compose uses this .env, and then eventually, when we actually start writing application code, it's gonna use this same .env. So uh, that connects it to the database, and then we went along designing the database. So like I mentioned, this is going to be an app where users can create, share, and watch lists of YouTube channels. Uh, the initial schema here, we just have a user table, uh, right now, we're not even thinking about passwords or like YouTube profiles or anything like that. We're gonna handle that in a later episode where we actually implement auth. But for now, we just have a basic user table with the username property. And then users can create what we're calling feeds. So a feed uh, is essentially a list of, in our case, YouTube channels. So you can create a feed, give it a name like cooking channels. And the description is all my favorite cooking channels. Now, if you want to add a channel to this feed, uh, that's gonna go into the feed item table. The other thing to look at is this has a user ID column because the user that created it is the owner of that specific table. Um, and so let's say you wanna add uh, Munchies, which is a YouTube channel, to this feed. Uh, you would create a feed item. But we also talked about um, how instead of storing like the channel ID or the channel URL in the feed item table, we're actually storing it in a separate table called feed item meta. Now, the more I look at this diagram, it's harder to describe, <laughs> describe from there. <laughs> Let's look at the code. So Prisma, this Prisma, uh, Prisma schema file here is our, is our definition. So we have a user, has these columns, and then we say that a user has many feeds or an array of feeds. Um, <laughs> this is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. <clears throat> Now, uh, we also created an, an enum called visibility because a feed will be able to be public, unlisted, or private. Um, and we just have that here as a visibility column. But the feed, as I said, uh, describes the list of things. So think of it, it is kind of a list, but we came up with the name feed uh, because eventually we want to support other things. Um, if you look in our notes, like eventually we want to be able to add Instagram profiles, TikTok profiles, Twitter users, blogs, all kinds of things. Right now, we're focusing on YouTube channels, but that's why we came up with a more generic name. 
So a feed has a name, like cooking channels, a description, a visibility, a creator, and then um, the specific items in that list. Now, for a feed item, it needs this feed item meta. And this is where we'll store actual YouTube channels. So let's say the user is, is, is using our app. They're, they're adding things to the list. They search for Munchies. The Munchies YouTube channel shows up. They click on it because they want to add it to their list. But what we do first is we're going to insert it into this table called the feed item meta. That's going to include the type. In this case, the only type we have is YouTube channel, but eventually we're going to add other types in here. But so the type is YouTube channel and then we have origin ID. So in this case, it's going to be something like the, the YouTube channel ID. Eventually, if we incorporate, let's say Instagram, this will be a feed item type of Instagram and the origin ID would be like the Instagram username. So this is going to store the specific channels, YouTube channels in this case, uh, because now uh, if multiple people add munchies to their feed, we can have uh, a UI that shows all the feeds with, with munchies in there or um, uh, various various metrics and, and ways of querying like that instead of just storing the munchies ID here in the feed item table. So this is the more generic table that stores every possible channel that could be in a list. And then the feed item table stores each channel that's in that specific list. So a feed item will have a name and a description. Um, ideally, like these are just going to transfer directly over from feed, feed item meta, but the creator of the list might want to give a custom name and a custom description to that specific item. And then this will link and have a feed item meta. So for instance, if I wanted to add munchies, uh, I'd insert a row here, the name would be munchies, but then the meta would link back to the actual munchies channel here. Um, and that's about it. So we have some other relationships here that say that one feed item belongs to a feed and one feed item has um, a feed item meta. So it links back to this. <laughs> yeah, so th this is the schema that we designed. And, uh, and then we ran it against our database. So Prisma is a really cool tool. Uh, we ran NPX Prisma migrate dev. And this actually took this Prisma schema that we wrote and generated SQL code. So if you look in here in the migrations folder, there's the SQL file uh, and it looks like standard SQL. So it generated these enums for us. We have the tables with all of their constraints and like foreign key constraints. Uh, it generated all of the SQL code for us after writing this schema. And then it also ran this uh, SQL code against our database. So if we run Prisma Studio, we can see all of the tables as they exist in our database. So we can see there's the user feed, feed item, feed item meta, um, and Prisma Studio lets us interact. So like we could insert a user here and everything else. So I think that covers everything we did today. Thank you for watching. Uh, definitely tune in over on Twitch. Every Friday, we're gonna be working on this app. Probably next time, we'll be working on the UI design. So we have the, right now we have the basic database structure there will be some changes eventually, like we might add more columns. Again, like I mentioned, when we add auth, this is going to get a little more complicated, but we'll work on that later. Next time, we're going to design the wireframe. So talk about what are the various screens, what's the user onboarding flow, that kind of thing. So thank you for watching this. Hopefully you tune in over on Twitch. Uh, and if this was useful to you or uh, any of my videos have been useful to you, uh, please consider supporting the Coding Garden. So I do not take sponsors on my stream, on my YouTube videos. Uh, I'm supported by viewers like you. So if you want to uh, support me, you can become a patron, a YouTube member, member, a Twitch sub, a GitHub sponsor, and I also have some merch that you can buy as well. And you don't have to do all of them. You can pick one, pick one, <laughs> but that's it. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Mm -hmm.